three-way wash, two-way sound, and one way to travel are among the prizes on this week's three to one. Now, ladies and gentlemen, meet your host, Tim Rogers. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, how nice. Thank you very much. Thank you for that welcome back. Have you missed us? Yes. Oh, that's very nice. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the first in a brand new series of your big Saturday entertainment, 3 2 1, the show that's three in one. It's a quiz, it's a game, and it's big variety. We've got some great guest stars for you, terrific contestants. Uh, big money, of course, and you know who's lurking around every corner here at Yorkshire TV. Our little booby prize, Dusty Bing. Come and say hello. <laughs> yes. And there he is. The dreaded Dusty Bin waiting to send one of our couples off at the end of the quiz with just a ceramic copy of himself and a few pounds. And remember, of course, if he's won at the end of the programme, all our contestants go home with is a brand new dustbin. That's all they get. So off you go, Dusty. We're going to see you a bit later on, unfortunately. Go on, off you go. Yes. And there they are, our contestants. Without them, if they didn't show, we wouldn't have a show. Let's meet them and see who they are from our lovely hostess, Linda Lee Lewis. Linda, how are you? All right, you good. Good. Nice. Looking good. It's been, it's been a long time, hasn't it? it certainly I know you were going to do a play when we spoke last. Did you That's do that? That's right. We did. We did the touring play called French Without Dressing with oh. Ken Platt. It was fabulous. Hey, had a Ken smashing Platt. time. Ken Platt. Yes. Oh, lovely Ken. And I've been very brave. I've had my hair cut. I know, but don't tell everybody. It'll grow. It'll grow. It'll grow. Yeah, so will mine. <laughs> Who are our contestants tonight? Right. We have Ian Carey from Guernsey and Jenny Simmons from London, Jeff and Bonnie Bebb from Cardiff, and Chris and Pam Jameson from Bishish Storford. Bishop, Bishop Storford. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Linda. Thank you, love. <laughs> I know. Lovely. So Ian Carey from Guernsey, Jenny from London, Jenny Simmons. How did you two meet? Well, I went to um, see an amateur production of Guys and Dolls in Guernsey. And Ian was playing nicely, nicely, and I just decided to go and talk to him afterwards. <laughs> so you saw him, just like the credit card company, you said, oh, that'll do me nicely, did you? <laughs> and I see this, listen here, Ian, you're a journalist. Uh, I mean, how many papers can there be in Guernsey, then? Not many. No, there's not. There's, there's only one, actually. Yeah. Uh -huh. And what do you do on that? Um, I do cover everything, news, features, uh -huh. vir virtually anything that comes up. I had a job once to report. I started in a very small way on the sun, and then I worked my way up to the dandy. <laughs> I did all that. Anyway, who have we got? Number two, Jeff and Bonnie Bebb, a place I know very well, Cardiff. Whereabouts in Cardiff are you from? Rubina. Rubina. Yes, sounds a bit like the, uh, the vitamin C drink, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, what do you know? Like, what do you do there then? I mean, what do you. I'm well, a carpenter. A carpenter? Yeah. Oh, dye the dovetail. <laughs> now, what do you do? I mean, you know, what do you do for your. Oh, for uh, kitchens, luxury Anything kitchens. especially? Just kitchens. Ki luxury kitchens, yeah. Uh, yeah. They are big. But do you have one, Bonnie? Do you have what? Has he fitted one in your yes, house? Yes, we have a really nice And it's a really nice one. Lovely. A lovely accent. <laughs> That's superb. You were not working anymore, of course. You used to work? No, I used to work for uh, British Rail. Oh, you were the one. <laughs> 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 Who's the third? That's Chris and Pam. Now, you are from Bishop Stortford. Mm -hmm. That's Hertfordshire. I know that well. And what do you do for a living, Chris? Um, I'm a sales manager with Cooper Vision contact lenses. Contact lenses? That's right, yeah. Uh -huh. You don't wear them yourself, do you? No, I don't. I don't yeah, have great. to. Cliff Richard wears our lenses. Oh, so yeah. you do stained glass windows as well. That's right. <laughs> 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 and Pam, how did you two meet then? Well, Chris is the best one to tell you about that. <laughs> <laughs> why is that why is we it? used to work together, actually. Did you? Yes. yes. I, I asked her out over a game of snooker. We arranged for uh, some friends of mine to ask her to make up a foursome at snooker. And then when she joined us, I managed to persuade them to go away home early so as we'd be left alone. Oh, really? <laughs> so I snookered her. OK. <laughs> good for you. We're glad you're all here. And jolly good luck to you. Now, this, of course, is a little different. Our 3 two, one quiz. The money, well, you know, we always give you £10 to start with. Now, you get £10 for each correct answer in the first round. The amount you win at the end of the first round is what you get for each correct answer in the second round. So if one couple was lucky enough to get two maximums, they could go home with £1,650 from the quiz alone. OK? The only difference in the quiz this time is that it's general knowledge and on the buzzer. When you think you know the answer, hit the buzzer, wait until I say your name, and then answer. You'll get three seconds. If you fail to come up with an answer in three seconds, I will say on offer, and the other couples will have a chance to go for the question. Hit the buzzer. Again, wait until I say your names. If they're wrong, well, that question will go into the bin, but I'll continue reading the questions until, until I get ten correct answers in the first round. So, jolly good luck to you. Here, the questions are here. 
Put your fingers, please, by the buzzers, not on them. <coughs> and here we go. Here is the first question. What word is used for the smallest in a litter, especially of pigs? <coughs> Ian and Jenny. Runt. That's right, a runt, whereas the word for the smallest of humans is a corbett. <laughs> <laughs> what is the everyday name for 20 hundred hours on the 24-hour clock? <coughs> Jeff and Bond. Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock, of course, in the evening. Which country is divided from France by the Pyrenees? <coughs> Chris and Pat. Spain. It's the, indeed it is, it's Spain. Who was the first Labour Prime Minister in this country after the Second World War? Chris Clement and Pat? Attlee. Clement Attlee is absolutely right. Here we are. In which city is the Empire State Building? <coughs> Jeff and Bob. New York. New York, of course, a great city. In snooker, how many coloured balls are there apart from the white and red balls? <coughs> Jeff and Bonnie. Six. Six is absolutely correct. Samantha Fox plays snooker, you know, but she has trouble every time she leans over the table. She gets snooker behind two pinks. <laughs> <laughs> In which city is the Tivoli Pleasure Garden and the statue Ian and Jen? Denmark. Uh, I said city, oh. so I can have to say on offer to the other two. Chris and Pat. Copenhagen. Copenhagen is absolutely right. You anticipated just a little too early there. Mm. What kind of food has varieties called brie, rock, uh, Ian and Jenny? Uh, cheese. Cheese is absolutely <laughs> right. OK, that is right. What breed of dog used to be kept at a monastery refuge in the Alps to rescue travellers? Ian and Jenny. St Bernard. St Bernard dog, of course. A very hard dog to keep because of its appetite. He eats a monk a day. <laughs> <laughs> who, who was the last English woman to win the singles at Wimbledon? Chris and Pam. Virginia Wade. Virginia Wade, absolutely right. That is our tenth question. Oh, what have we got? It's pretty close, would you believe? Jenny and Ian and Jeff and Bonnie are both on 40 pounds, but in the lead at the moment, Chris and Pam, 50 pounds they have. <laughs> Good. That's nice. Very even, Stephen. And again, the good thing about our quiz this, this particular series, you can sit back and relax just a while while you get your thoughts for the next round, because here's another feature we're introducing to 3 to 1 this series. We're going to introduce you to a newcomer, a newcomer to 3 to 1. Here's a young lady who's doing very, very well on the club scene up and down the country. She's been very, very lucky and written a song which has been recorded with a friend of hers. Please welcome Deanna James. <laughs>
Yes, indeed. Deanna James, and I'm sure you're going to hear a lot more of that young lady. A very, very good, talented vocalist. Anyway, here we are, folks. Round two of our quiz. As Jeff and Bonnie, Ian and Jenny on £40 for each correct answer this time, and Chris and Pam go for £50 for each correct answer. The only difference is, in this round, I'm only going to ask 15 questions, <coughs> OK? At the end of the round, we do have to say um, goodbye, unfortunately, to the couple with the lowest amount of money, but uh, stick around and enjoy the rest of the show. Anyway, here we go. Good luck to you. How many sides has a pentagon? That's Chris and Pam. Five. Five is absolutely right. What is the sacred book of Islam? The Ian Quran. and Jenny. The Sorry? Quran. The Quran is right. Name the singer and actress who was mother of Liza Minnelli. <laughs> Jeff and Bonnie. Judy Garland. Judy Garland is right. In which ocean are the Fiji Islands? Chris and Pam. Pacific. Pacific is right. What do the initials JP stand for when the... Chris and Pam Justice have anticipated... Of the peace. Justice of the peace. Justice of the peace. Yes, indeed, you were right. When applied to a magistrate. In which novel does the heroine fall in love with Mr. Rochester? Ian and Jenny. Northanger Abbey. Wrong. Oh, yeah. On offer. Jeff and Bonnie. Jane Eyre. Jane Eyre is right. Well done, Bonnie. What do the Americans use? What word do the Americans use for sweets? Chris and Pam. Candy. Candy is right. What do signets grow up in? Ian and Jenny. Swans. Swans is right. In what field of art was Henry Moore very famous? Chris Sculpture. and Pam. Sculpture is correct. What kind of vegetable have varieties called Aram Pilot and Desiree? Chris and Pat. Potatoes. Potatoes is right. What is the price of a stamp on a 10 gram letter which is being sent to Australia? Jeff and Bob. 22 pence. Sorry? 22 pence. Uh, that is wrong. On offer. Ian and Jenny. 18. Wrong. Would you believe it's 34 pence? So you haven't got, you haven't got any relatives over there. <laughs> <laughs> what is the name of the television series in which Edward Woodward plays Robert McCall? Chris and Pat. Equalizer. Equalizer is right. A big hit show. He's marvelous in that show. Name the dog which is most often seen in the company of Bob Carroll G's. Jeff and Bonnie. Spit. Spit, yes. Easy name to remember. It's on the tip of your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> name the place. We want the name of the home ground of Fulham Football Club. Jeff and Bonnie. Craven Cottage. Craven Cottage is right. And here is the 15th question. What name is usually given to the large flat case in which an artist carries his or her drawings? Jeff and Bonnie. Portfolio. Portfolio is correct. So what have we got then at the end of this week's quiz on 3 to 1? Ian and Jenny on £120. Jeff and Bonnie have £240. The winners, no doubt, Chris and Pam have £400. <laughs> Good. There we go. Well, Ian and Jenny, as I say, it's always <laughs> sad to say goodbye Thank to you, you. but uh, I suppose it's seemed quite a long time for you, isn't it? Uh, stick around and enjoy the rest of the show. Take care. Thank enjoy you. yourself. Bye-bye. And you too. Take care. Love to everybody in Guernsey. Thanks. And we're going to see you just after the break. OK, a lot of big prizes. Smashing guests for you. See you on 3, 2, 1. Go, go, fun. the first in a brand new series and we've got Jeff and Bonnie who are from Rebinder in Cardiff playing in part this part of the program against Chris and Pam who are from Bishop Stortford not easy to say that one of course now you know what happens here folks remember we're about to show you the first of our three items and uh, when we have three of them on the table of course you have to listen to the clues work them out if you can not easy we know that and then you've got to choose one we have when we have three on the table to reject if you are the lucky couple who's going to get through the elimination question. OK, so then it's item number one, then, on 3, 2, 1, this series. And here are an energetic bunch of boys and girls who are doing their thing with a number called Hot Pursuit. Please welcome the Alan Harding Dancers.
There he is. Yes, Jeff. How are you? Not too bad, thanks, mate. You OK? Yeah, great. Yeah, that oh, accent's a lovely accent. <laughs> yeah, ah, yeah. <laughs> great Scouse accent. Good to see you again, Jeff. Yeah. And a great routine there from Alan, of course. What Thank are you me. leaving the folks as a clue here? Well, I've got an American football. Oh, yeah? OK, that's and the clue. The American football. Look at that. Now, listen to the rhyme. Handle this right, and your score will show a nice touchdown. And you win 5-0. That's the first one on 3 2 1 this series. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff okay. and the Adam Harding dancers. Thanks, Thanks, Jeff. Good luck. Yeah. Well, there's a bit of chatting going on here. Yes, says Bonnie. Yes, yes, what? Holiday to Hawaii. Oh, really? Oh, that's <laughs> great. Great. No, it's not a holiday to the rubbish tip anyway, no? No, no, no? Oh, good. What are you folks? You're thinking the same? Well, American football. Uh huh. Oh, good. But, you know, they're, they're very, very devious, these clues here. However, we're not going to worry about rejecting one until we get three here on the table in this part of the show. So keep thinking like that. I'm glad you're thinking about them straight away. It's not easy when you're at home. It's not easy when you're standing here. But we're going to have item number two of 321 this week. And here's a young man. I think he's terrific, this kid. I really think he's going to go a long, long way in our business. You've seen him many times on television, on shows like Live from the Piccadilly, Live from the Palladium, and on Summertime Special. Please welcome Brian Connolly. All right, hold it. Who threw this beer, Matt? <laughs> now, you don't want to mess with me, ladies and gentlemen, because I'm tough. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Mind you, uh... <laughs> I had a very hard time as a child. In fact, I was born with a beard. <laughs> Sadly, my mother was tickled to death. <laughs> anyway, oh, please. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, I've got to tell you this. <laughs> Have you ever noticed, though, whenever people are in cars, they always pick their nose? And it's true, always at the traffic lights, I go, I'm bored. What shall I do? I know what I'll do. I'll pick my nose. <laughs> and they did, they go, mirror, signal, manoeuvre. <laughs> and I always catch someone looking at it, and they go, sorry, yeah, it's uh, uh, yeah. And they've got to drive away like that. <laughs> Doing all these weird hand signals, you know. <laughs> Thank you, Flipper. Thank you. Um, beautiful song now, ladies and gentlemen. Beautiful song dedicated to everyone here that has an outside toilet. It's called Help Me Make It Through the Night. <laughs> A lovely song. <laughs> beautiful song, ladies and gentlemen, dedicated to a trapeze artist that divorced his wife because he kept catching her in the act. <laughs> and I'd like to change the mood slightly now, and uh, if we could just... Bring down the lights. That'll be fine. Thank you. <laughs> Beautiful song. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> right, this is a quiet song. <laughs> oh, it's, 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 it's... Hello? <laughs> <laughs> Come along, baby. Whole lot of shaking going on. Come along, baby. You know I've done you no wrong. I ain't bragging. Whole lot of shaking going on. I said, shake, baby, shake. Shake, baby, shake. Shake, baby, shake. <laughs> shake, baby, shake. I ain't bragging. Whole lot of shaking going on. Yeah! Thank you. There he is. The Brian. Hey, 
good. All right. Yeah, my part of the world, that's a great boat race, that, isn't it? Well, I know. <laughs> great sport. Right, this well, is what I've got. What have you got? Some hand cream. That's the clue, yep. Right, what about the this? rhyme? It's yep, yep. <laughs> oh, Come with their heart on that. Sorry. <laughs> Don't fear those rainy showers erratic. Both wet or dry, they're automatic. There you are. That's the second one on the show tonight. I know you're having a great season in Blackpool. Keep yeah. it going. Brian, Thank take care. Bye-bye, mate. Thank Brian you. Connolly, folks. <laughs> oh. Well, I tell you what, it might be the first show in the new series, but there's a lot of bubble going on here. What do you think that could be? Some sort of washing... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, washing, or the bin. Yeah. Or the bin. Yeah. Oh, that's good. He's the first one the who's bin. been thinking about the bin. <laughs> Keep, about the bin. Yeah, don't forget about him, believe me, because uh, he's around there somewhere the whole time. It's up to you what you choose, of course, when it comes to the time to choose. But we're now going to go on and have item number three this week. Here's a young lady who's making one of her rare solo appearances. You've seen her in many guises on TV as a presenter, as a game show panellist, and, of course, member of a very, very famous pop group. But here, singing a number from her latest record, I understand, if you're right, Cheryl Baker. Cheryl, how are you, darling? OK? Oh, thank you. Smash your number there. Listen, was I right? Is that your new new album or what? I'm working on an album now, so I see. It's not, I haven't got a title yet, but... No. 
I'm looking forward to finishing. There you are. I can't get over the Cockneys on the show this. Where are you, where, where about you from in London? Which Bethnal Green. Are you, well, you can't get more Cockney than that. I thought I was Lambeth Walk. That was near enough. <laughs> How are the rest of the kids in the group? They're all fine. Good. Smashing. Give also them their love. love. And what's this? This is the clue, yeah? I'll tell you. This is an old-style two-piece phone. Okay. It's heavy. I bet it is. There it is. And Kenton what's the rhyme say, Cheryl? It says, you could get canned if that's your style. It sounds as if it's just your pile. There you are. That is the third one on the table tonight. We're going to thank Cheryl Baker. Bye-bye, love. Mm. Thank you. All the best. Take care. <laughs> I tell you what, this is really something. You're <laughs> chatting away like goodness here. What, what you said? Furniture, said? Yeah, furniture with a pile. pile. Yeah. Two piece. Chris is asking you, Bonnie, about this. <laughs> I, think you were, I think you would be asking <laughs> Pam. Well, look, we have three on the table now. You've got to make a decision one way or the other. As we have th three here, I can now read the first two again. Now, this was item number one. The American football, of course, came in from Jeff of the Allen Harding dancers. He said, handle this right and your score will show. A nice touchdown and you win 5-0. All right, that's the first one. Item number two came in from Brian Connolly, a bottle of hand cream. He said, don't fear those rainy showers erratic, both wet or dry, they're automatic. There you are. Three are here. You have to reject one if you get through our elimination question. So what one's it going to be? Oh. Well, you don't have to be quiet you now. Oh, well. no, if you win 5-0, yeah. you've won five love, so you've got the choice of five prizes. Oh, oh that's not bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's good. Great, you're thinking of big <laughs> prizes. Yes. None of, nobody's thinking about the <laughs> bin this no, week. No, I think it's lovely. That one's the bin. Which yeah. one's that? Oh, yeah. This is the telephone. The last one that came in from Cheryl? Yeah. Do you think yeah. that's the bin? Yeah. 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 Oh, well. Yeah, so it's, 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 it's your choice. Which one are you? It's old, is it? It's a new bin, isn't it? Oh, well, yes, it is a brand new dustbin, I can tell you that. Whatever they cost today, eight, ten quid, I wouldn't know. But there you are. Three are on the table. You have to reject one. What are you going to reject if you get through? How about Chris and Pam? The phone. Definitely Bonnie. Yes, yeah, Jeff and Bonnie want to get rid of the phone. That's OK. Yeah. That we've established then. You will reject the phone if you get through the question. Chris and Pam are still thinking about it. What's going to happen? Uh, <laughs> She's giving it to him straight away. Uh, hand cream. Yeah, definitely. Hand cream. Yeah. OK with you? Yeah. Yep. Really, Pam? Yeah. Go on then, she says. Is it OK with you? Yeah. Sure. It's all right with you, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Good. <laughs> all right. We've established that, have we? You will reject the phone. You're going to get rid of the hand cream if you get through the question. Yeah. Good. The question, the elimination question, is here. Please put your hands beside the buzzer there, not over it. You mustn't hover. Just beside. When you think you know the question, hit the buzzer and answer. If you answer before you hit the buzzer this time, I do have to offer it to the other couple. If they're right, of course, they will go through. If not, I'll keep reading it until somebody gets it right. So very good luck to you. And here it is. This lady is both a singer and an actress. She appeared in a James Bond film with Roger Moore. She once yawned on television and a car emerged from her mouth. Oh, huh? That is Jeff. Who is it? Grace Jones. Yeah. Grace Jones, absolutely oh, right. Well done, Jeff. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes, you remember that. That was yes, quite something yeah. when the car came yeah. out. My next next line was good. It, yes, she became famous for slapping Russell Harty. Yeah. yeah, well, we could have all done with a bit of that, couldn't we? <laughs> However, we have to say goodbye to Chris and Pam right here and now. But here's the money they won in the quiz. How much was it, Linda? The 400 pounds. 400 Ted. pounds, That's folks. Good. good. Evening. <laughs> There's your ceramic dusty bin. And. If you take a look across there, Cheryl Baker has for you the consolation prize this week. What is it, Cheryl? This is brilliant. Have a look. It's an electronic food mixer that cooks as it blends and prepares sauces, soups, pâtés and mousses in a fraction of the normal cooking time, as well as making cream and grinding coffee. Voila! Da -da -da -da. Indeed, la la. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. All the best, thank you. Take care. Thanks for being smashing contestants as always. See you in a couple of minutes. Welcome back to part three of 321. And Jeff and Bonnie Bebb from Cardiff have got through to this part of the program, but you can't believe it yet, can you? No. no. Well, you've rejected, of course, this one here, which came in from Cheryl Baker. She brought you in the old style two piece phone. Any idea what you think it is? Might be hi fi. Might be. I'm hoping it's the You're bin. You're hoping, of course, <laughs> hope everyone is the bin. Here it is. She said, You could get canned if that's your style. It sounds as if 
It's just your pile. So we'll see what it is for you. Cheryl brought you in an old-fashioned telephone. She said you could be canned if that's your style. Well, the mention of canned might start you thinking about the bin. You did, of course. But the clue object was a phone with separate earpiece, i.e. an earphone. So canned could mean wearing earpieces, which leads to it sounds as if it's just your style. And you'd been able to hear the best sounds around with this pile. Just take a look at this. <laughs> Yes, Ted, it's the ultimate in hi-fi. A stacking system complete with a compact disc player, an LP deck, twin tape facilities, remote control and a graphic equaliser. Yeah. With this collection, you would have had the best sounds around. Yes, you would have done. Thank you. Jeff. Thank you, yes, the it's best sounds game. around. I mean, that, that really was a sensational prize. Yes, it wasn't the bin, and you were right on that one, weren't you? Yeah. you had a, but, I mean, like all the prizes here, it's not just one thing. It's quite a bit of uh, merchandise that went with that. I'm afraid it has been rejected. So uh, maybe it's a good idea that one of you thinks on prizes and one thinks on Dusty Bin the whole time. <laughs> just keep doing that. We're going to go on now and have item number four. And we've got a comic here who's got a great, relaxed, laid-back style. Most comedians look for a catchphrase. He's got one, but it lasts for half an hour. Roy Walker's here. Thank you, thank you very much indeed, ladies and gentlemen, and what a pleasure to be here on 321. You can't believe some of the things you see on television nowadays. The Japanese have just brought out a new motor car. It does 500 miles to the gallon. It'll never sell in this country. It would take 10 years to get a set of glasses. <laughs> some of the adverts. I had to have a baby before I found the right shampoo. I thought your chemist drives a hard bargain. <laughs> I have a brother-in-law, Shuey. He gets things mixed up. Someone told him that 80% of all accidents occur within two miles of the home. So he moved. <laughs> he won the Tour de France, went missing for three weeks doing a lap of honor. I have to go everywhere with him. We went to the Greyhound Derby. I said, did you enjoy that? He said, fantastic. The first time I ever saw a rabbit on a motorbike. <laughs> Gets things mixed up. We went to this fancy dress party. He showed up in a smock, a straw hat, wellies, and a crook. I said, what are you here as? He said, a spy. I said, dressed like that? He said, yes, I'm a shepherd's spy. <laughs> Eat all sorts of jobs. Used to work in the butchers. Took him four hours to hang up the mints. <laughs> he got the sack. Try to sell a lady a leg of liver. <laughs> then he got a job putting telegraph poles into the ground. The foreman said, how many did you do today, Shuey? He said, three. He said, Murphy's lot did 200. Shuey said, have you seen how far his are sticking out of the ground? <laughs> nice sweet fella. Unlucky. I'm unlucky. When my ship comes in, I'll be at the airport. <laughs> I caught one of those 24-hour viruses. I've had it for a month. <laughs> Shuey was unlucky. He bought a pair of those turtle shell shoes. Took him a week to walk out of the shop. <laughs> Really unlucky. He rang the Samaritans once. The fellow at the other end of the line shot himself. <laughs> Somebody left him a hundred thousand pounds in the will. 
And he went down to the solicitors to get the money. The solicitor said, I'm very sorry, there's been a rupture in a bill of probate till they get the legacies together, no one's being paid out. Sure, he said, is that right? <laughs> he had a few Guinnesses on a train on the way home. His wife said, did you get the money? He said, no, there's another fella involved. <laughs> a fella called Bill Probate. <laughs> and he's had a rupture. <laughs> till he got his legs and his knees together, nobody's getting paid out. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you. There he is. Oh, please. Listen, Roy, don't. don't. Oh. They'll start talking now, please. <laughs> <laughs> Very good as always. Listen, have you got a catchphrase for us? Uh, a catchphrase? Yeah. May you be in heaven half an hour before the devil knows you're dead. <laughs> oh, yes. I'll keep that one. What do you? This is going to be the clue, is this it? This is a clue. A, a, a dash in this, a dash in that. It all depends what's under your hat. There you are. That is the clue. This time, ladies and gentlemen, Roy Walker. Good luck, Roy. Thank you, Ted. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye. All the best. There you are. Oh, well, in actual fact, the clue is an old-fashioned poke bonnet. There you are. An old-fashioned poke bonnet is the clue. That time, you've heard the rhyme. We have three on the table. I can read one of the other two again just to refresh your memory. What one would you like to hear? This one. This one, one here? Yeah, yeah. The hand cream, which yeah. came in from Brian Connolly. Bottle of hand cream. Brian said, don't fear those rainy showers erratic. Both wet or dry, they're automatic. Yeah, three on the yeah. table. Has Dusty been here yet? Well... So. Who knows? You don't think so? No, not yet. Well, one's got to be rejected. Which one's it going to be? Hand cream. Hand cream? Yeah. Yes. You don't want that. Why? Because you, you don't think it's the bin, but you think it's something else? Uh, kitchen equipment. Yeah? You don't, no, don't need, need that? that. Don't oh, no. Not. not for the kitchens you make. You're going to reject it then? Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. That's going to go there in the bottle of hand cream. Brian Connolly said, don't fear those rainy showers erratic, both wet or dry. They're automatic. Right. Don't fear those rainy showers erratic. That could suggest that we, you've won a week's holiday somewhere in England during the summer. <laughs> or a day trip to Manchester any time. <laughs> but the clue object was a bottle of hand cream, not rust remover, so that suggests something smooth, maybe for the hands, and it leads to both wet or dry, they're automatic, which means that you'll never have rough red hands. Again, because in future, all your washing would have been done by this lot. Take a look. Yes, indeed, it is a set of luxurious kitchen equipment made up of a compact laundry system which consists of a washing machine and a tumble dryer. Then there's an ironing centre complete with iron and extra, plus a trouser press and a dozen shirts. You would have been crisp and clean with this collection. Indeed you would. Thank you, Linda. It has to go. Take it away, please. Well, you, you could have done with a couple of new shirts. Yeah, but with the kitchen, you've probably got most of that stuff, yeah, have you? Yeah. yeah, well, again, a fabulous prize, Lovely. being 3 two, one uh, And we haven't got rid of the bin yet. As you say, is he no. here yet? Is he to come? We'll have to wait and find out. Good luck. Keep the fingers crossed as we have item number five. And it's great to introduce a really international group who've become part of showbiz history. We worked together many years ago, here singing one of their big hits, Saturday Night of the Movies, The Incomparable Drifters. All right, guys, keep it going now. Come on. Well, Saturday night at 8 o'clock I know where I'm gonna go I'm gonna pick my baby up Take her to the picture show Everybody in the neighborhood Just set up to be there too And we're gonna have a ball Just like we always do Saturday night at the movies Who cares what picture you see now when you're hugging with your baby, let's roll in a burgundy. Oh yeah. Now the same color and cinema school. I can't start a Hollywood. Popcorn from the candy stand that makes it all seem twice as good. You know there's always a lot of a pretty girl, but since they don't try to But they never can compare what you the girl sitting by my side. Now when you're hugging with your baby, let's throw in a burgundy. Oh, yeah. Everybody clap those hands real loud. Come on. Now when you're hugging with your baby, let's throw in a burgundy. Well, 
Here's Johnny. Here's Johnny. Yeah. Good to see you. Two, Thank three, you. and sixes, please. I like that. Oh, Listen, it's, it's good to see you. Thank Smash you very much, here. Tim. Singing better than ever, huh? Thank you. Terrific. Oh. Everybody here loved you there. And what are you, what are you doing at the moment? You're on tour? We're on tour now, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Never ever stop. He does more one-nighters than anybody I know, these boys. <laughs> what are you going to leave them as a clue? What have you got under here? Ah. Oh, yes. Oh, it's a lucky, huh? A used horseshoe oh, okay. is what it is. <laughs> a used horseshoe is the clue for you. And what does their rhyme say, John? A tidy bit you will have won if you take a tip at three, two, one. That is the final one here tonight, and we're going to thank Johnny Moore and the Drifters. Thanks, Johnny. Good luck. <laughs> well, now, a bit of chatting there. Jeff, Bonnie, what do you say about that one? That's old iron. That must be the bin. You what? Old iron. So old iron, so that must be the bin. Yeah. Well, yeah. we've got three on the table here, and uh, so. you can hear one of the other two again. First item there, or the bonnet, of course, came in from Roy Walker. Which one do you want to hear out of those Which two? Job? Just to refresh your memory. Bonnet again? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Hear the bonnet? Yes, the old Pope bonnet. The old-fashioned Pope bonnet. Roy brought in a dash in this, a dash in that. It all depends on what's under your hat. Yeah. So there you are. Three are here. One has to be rejected. We know the bin certainly is here now. Which one is it? Wow. I see the horseshoe. The horseshoe? Listen. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? The audience Oh, they're getting, getting, getting a bit of advice back. What do you think, audience? Which one? The hat, the ball, the horseshoe. <laughs> yeah, they think the lot. So well, what one's it going to be? Horseshoe. Definitely, yeah, Bonnie. Yeah. Yes. Definitely, yeah. Okay, you haven't got relatives out there. No, not all no, this no, no, no. Okay, so you're going to reject this? Yeah. Yes. All right. Let's hope it is what you think it is. You're going to reject then item number five, the used horseshoe which came in from Johnny of the Drifters. He said, "A tidy bit you will have won if you take a tip at three, two, one." All right. A tidy bit you will have won. That could start you thinking of having something like a day out at the races or backing a few winners. It leads to if you take a tip at three to one. Well, if you have three clue cards to choose from, the odds there are three to one. But the clue object was a used horseshoe, which is only fit for scrap. Yes, three, two, one, rubbish tip, right. Dusty Ben! Yeah. <laughs> yes. OK, there he is, dancing around, but I can tell you he's not really too happy. But we are, Dusty. Off you go. Take him away. He's got to go. You've rejected him. That's wonderful. Yes, on our first show. So there you are, down to the final two now, and at least you know you're going to have a good prize tonight. You've been very good, Jeff. He's been working him out well, isn't he, Bonnie? He certainly has. He certainly yeah. has. OK, the final two. I can read them both again. So listen carefully. The item number one, the American football came in from Jeff of the Alan Harding Dancers. He said, handle this right and your score will show... A nice touchdown, and you'll win 5-0. Right. That's one. Item. Oh, there's a buzz going around the audience here. <laughs> Item number four came in from Roy Walker, an old-fashioned poke bonnet. He said, a dash in this, a dash in that. It all depends what's under your hat. So, there you are. You're a very good position here. Two on the table. A good prize is yours. The bin is certainly out of the way. What do you say? Yeah. You, do you want? You we, want? We reject the holiday. What do you I think that know. is? Care. Oh dear. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Oh great. <laughs> I love what that. You're the dash bit. Some uh, league of care. So what is it going to be? All right, we get rid of that. You want to get rid of this one? Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. Not even a no from the audience. <laughs> so this is going to be rejected, is it? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yes, Bonnie. Yes. Pause slightly then, but it is going to go. That's good. Yeah, take it away. All right, then. You're going to reject, then, item number one. It came in from Jeff of the Alan Harding Dancers. Handle this right, and your score will show a nice touchdown, and you win 5-0. I open it. It's gone. OK, it's been rejected. Handle this right, and your score will show. Well, don't worry. We're not going to dress you up in those padded shoulders that American footballers wear, although, Bonnie, you could look like Crystal Carrington for a day even more, couldn't you? Great. <laughs> The two main clues were in the second line. A nice touchdown and you win 5-0. And you would have been touching down. You were right by plane and the destination was 5-0. Honolulu, Hawaii. Take a look at this. Yes, you would have been flown to Hawaii, that island in the middle of the Blue Pacific where palm trees and hula hula skirts are part of the scenery. It would have been an eight-day holiday and you'd have stayed in the luxurious Reef Hotel facing the golden sands of Waikiki Beach. Sea sports are the order of the day, as well as tickets to the Pro Bowl football game. A rough, tough spectacle that's one of America's favourite pastimes. An eight-day break you'd have talked about for years to come. Yeah. Fantastic. I can uh, understand the rules.
Thanks for that quick one, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Bonnie says she's, she could never understand the rules of that football anyway. But uh, I bet that this shape board, they're going to... I wonder whether they're going to be at you in Wales for rejecting yeah. this, huh? Mm. Yeah. Well, it was a fabulous prize, and I'm sure you'd have loved that, wouldn't you? Wouldn't Would you have liked that, folks? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we could have all done with that. So, we know what you hope this is. Let's, well, you know it's a good prize, whatever yeah. you're going home yes. with tonight. Yeah. OK, you've stuck with this one. Roy Walker brought you in. Item number four, old-fashioned Pope Bonnet. He said, a dash in this, a dash in that. It all depends what's under your hat. OK, a dash in this, a dash in that. That could start you thinking that it might be something to do with drinks, a cocktail cabinet, a mini bar, or it could be something referring to speed. It all depends what's under your hat. And the hat is the main clue here because, of course, the speed depends entirely on the poke you've got under the bonnet. You won the car! Yes! Yeah. <laughs> Bonnie, Jeff, that's fantastic. Let's go and get your prize. Come on. How about that? Terrific. Well done. How about that? That's so great. On our first show as well. And Bonnie's just said to me, oh, goody, a new car. My sister's got one exactly the same colour. So if her sister's watching, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> anyway, what did they win in the quiz, Linda? 240 pounds. 240, yes. folks. Not bad. Well done, love. Smash it. Good luck. <laughs> what a great way to start our series. It's been a great show. I'd like to thank all of our great guests, marvellous contestants as always, but thank you for watching. We're with you this time every week for the next three months. Take care. Three, two, one. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs> Good night. It's not just the title of a program, it's a promise. There'll be a TNA explosion tonight at 11 on Challenge. Take cover, wrestling lovers.